by the works of the law, rather through the law, we became conscious of sin. That's right. You understand that? That's right. Let me say something to you. If we didn't have the law, we would never be aware of our conscious of sin. That's right. We need the law. You tell your neighbor, we need the law. We need the law. And some of us need the, need the law more than others. That's right. Because I'm telling you, I've seen some Christians do some things that I said, oh my God. How can they talk in front of a fire hydrant? How can they do some of the things they do? Right. You have to be conscious of that. The law gives us that consciousness of sin. Amen. So it's very important for us to really understand that. Um, in righteousness, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's really detrimental to your health not to be connected with God in your relationship. Let me say also that the... Um, I want to change it up a little bit. Um, acting in accordance with the, uh, with the divine moral law, free from guilt or sin. Yes. yes. There are absolute standards on what the right and wrong, regardless of the context. You cannot do stuff because of favoritism. You have to look at it for what it is. Amen. You have to look at it for what it is. You know, when, when that rainbow came and, and he told Noah, this is your covenant, I will not bring down the flood again against you or anyone else. He promised him to do that. But he lived the holy life. You know, sometimes we have to press through some of the things we're doing. I know it don't look like we're going to come out, but we are going to come out. God is going to take us to the other side. Amen. We're not going to stay stuck as long you have a relationship with God. It's so important. Not just come to church and just go as the same way you came. But when you come to church, it has to be a transformation That's that right. takes place in your mind. And then your actions have to follow what just took place in church. See, I know we're saying words, but these words mean something. If you're not taking them and put them into action, then you're really, really just wasting some of your time. God cannot do to you what you don't allow. Amen. Now, what I mean by that, Pastor had someone here, um, I believe it was a few weeks ago, was an apostle. And, and he said, uh, a prophet. And he said that God will not go against your will. That's right. Amen. Amen. That means if you don't want to do it, God ain't going to make it. God not going to make you do it. You know how they say, I wonder why that happened. Well, it happened because you allowed it to happen. That's right. That's how it happened. God does not go against your will. So if you want it bad enough, then that's going to be on you. Amen. Watch it. Let me just say, uh, talk about uh, righteousness, a behavior that is more justified or right. Such behavior is characterized by accepting standards of moral justice, virtue, or upright. The Bible standard of human righteousness is God's own perfect perfection in every attribute, every attribute every attitude and, and every behavior mm -hmm. and also in every word That's right. that means the way that you act is the way that God is going to see some of your outcome amen because the way you treat people the way you act and the things that you speak it's really a mirror of what God you have to represent God in the, everything that you do and everything yes. that you say yes. amen so righteousness is so important and we have to uphold the law just like Noah did in Genesis. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Amen.